A big thank you to the supporters of this channel. Hello everybody and welcome to an increasingly requested video. So what are my in-game settings? What Runelight plugins do I use? And hopefully this video will be the one to answer all of those questions at least as of 2022. So really you should pick and choose to customize your own Runelight experience as well as the normal game, of course. So just before I get into my in-game settings, the first part of this video, I wanted to mention that I will be including chapters on this video. So if you have a specific part you want to jump to, please do so now. Otherwise, let's begin. But first, a little known content creator in the old school space known as Bodhi has been suffering from a condition known as TSW. Topical steroid withdrawal is a severe skin condition caused by an overprescribed or misuse of corticosteroid creams used to treat skin conditions. It is unrecognized as an official health condition by doctors, and therefore, has no cure, with the only option to go cold turkey, which causes the individual to go through a hellish recovery process that can last literal years. And this is mainly caused due to an uneducation towards the adverse effects of man-made steroid creams. Now, I myself am a Canadian, so therefore I cannot sign this petition. But if you are a UK resident, I urge you to sign this petition. I will link Bodhi's video in the description down below where he explains his condition in a bit more detail. Thank you for listening. The petition will be linked in the description down below, and it is a very quick process to make your signature matter. So here we are, we are beginning with the in-game settings, and as you can see, all of these settings here are pretty self-explanatory and up to the user themselves. One thing I did want to mention before I move over is that in the house options, you have the option to teleport inside of your house. You can toggle that on or off. So to begin with here in the activities panel, we have the hit splat tinting, which I'm a fan of. I like to see which hit splats are my own. And next I have the show boss health overlay enabled, which creates another UI element when you're attacking something. So for example, if we attack Johnny the Beard over here, it should pop up with a little icon over here. And the minigame's Last Man Standing fog color is up to the user's preference. Now up next I have the audio section, which is pretty self-explanatory. There's two options here for the music area mode, and I just prefer the modern. If I'm completely honest, these are just settings that I haven't touched. Here is the chat settings. Now there's nothing really particular about this. I like having precise timing on because I like to see how close to a second I am with my boss kills. Loot drop notifications on. Minimum item value set to 50,000 coins. Untradable loot notifications on. A few other things which are toggled off as I'm not really focusing on combat achievements at this moment and filtering the boss kill counts out with the spam filter is not something that I want to have done. Continuing down here, we have the chat color options, and I'll quickly scroll through these and you can pause the video to see if there's anything that you like in particular. If I open up the chat here, you can see that my clan is in yellow text, and there is the chat color split color. Light blue, default. Up next, the controls. We pretty much covered this with the panel. It's just a bit extended here and not much of note. We have the middle mouse button, which is how I control my camera. Shift click to drop items is very important as well as the move follower options lower down. Moving the follower options lower down makes it so that you can't left click on your pet when you're doing PVM content. So you have to right click the pet in order to interact with it, which has been seen in previous videos of mine. The control click to invert the run mode is a fantastic feature, which I believe was added to the main game's client. Previously, I think it was on RuneLight. Correct me in the comments section below. But I find this extremely useful, and I'd almost say integral to my gaming experience. And up next, the keybinds. Really, you should set these to whatever you're comfortable with. My logic on this is that F1 is your inventory, F2 is for your special attack or attack options, F3 is for your prayers, F4 spellbook, and F5 for my gear. Nothing else really matters, I find, so the rest of my hotkeys I don't really make use of. The modern layout is enabled, but I don't think this actually has an effect because I'm not using the resizable modern layout. 
I'm using the resizable classic layout. And last but not least, Escape closes the current interface, which is a massive option. I use Escape to close pretty much every interface that is opened. Up next, the display. I have hide roofs off because I have a certain rune light plugin, which I will get into later. And of course, scroll wheel can change zoom distance. I play with middle screen brightness. I want to mention this. Honestly, it's just sort of what I've gotten used to over time. I used to play on the darkest brightness level, but I guess one day it just reset and I got used to it. So now I play in the middle. Up next, gameplay, except 8 is off, mainly because I mainly play an Ultimate Iron Man. And really, this is just preference on food or potions can form supply piles on death. I'd highly recommend having this confirmation option off, as most likely when you're reclaiming your things, you're going to be in an intense situation. And you really should know the value of your items before you go and die somewhere on accident. Check your items kept on death you'll see what you risk. And of course, the gravestone fee will appear right here. Up next, the interfaces. As previously mentioned, I play on resizable classic layout. I have data orbs on. Now, my game client layout being on resizable classic is more of a preference thing, as I'm a fan of the resizable layout, but I don't really like the modern layout as much. I'm not a fan of this, so I like to preserve the classic layout. I feel it has more style and it feels more old school. Not a fan of the store button, so I have it disabled, as well as the wiki entity lookup, which is actually... Huh? That must be a runelight plugin that has that enabled. But either way, having the wiki available to assist you in any given situation is a good thing to do in this day and age. Fun fact, if you type colon colon wiki and we'll look up a banana, for example, your search will be opened in the old school RuneScape wiki. Fun little fact for you there. Up next, the collection log. I have the new additional pop-ups on for my main, but I don't actually have this on for Inquisitor. Instead for Inquisitor, I only have the chat additions on, not the pop-ups. Just a preference thing, really. And of course, combat achievement tasks. I have this the same on both accounts. They are on. And I turn my trade delay off as I am only going to be trading with people who I trust. Now, of course, take care with disabling this. If you find that you're trading with individuals who are not trusted you want to have this on i'd say quest list i'm just gonna skim through this one as these are the settings for the main i have them different for inquisitors so pause if you need to see anything tooltips show the remaining xp for a level yep good stuff i'd say the prayer tooltips are more for newer players which are starting to understand and see what prayers do now of course i still have them on which it doesn't really bother me either way and it's nice for quick access if you want to brush up your knowledge but if you generally know what all the prayers do you can disable this and it really won't have an effect on anything to be honest the special attack tooltip is essentially the same thing as the prayer tooltip. When you hover over a special attack bar, it will give you a description of what the special attack does. So here is the big part of the resizable client for you all. How I see through the chat box and how I have it laid out like this. So click through transparent chat box, which means I can click through the chat box. Wow, revolutionary, amazing. And of course, transparent chat box, if you have that off, it will be like that. And I don't actually think you can click through it. No, you can't. So that disables click through. Even if you have this option on, who would have thought? Now I actually used to play with transparent side panel, but I'm not exactly a fan of this anymore. I like having my inventory as it is. It makes it feel like it truly is a backpack on my character. And up next, the scroll bar position. I have mine set to left as when it's on right, I find that when I'm doing PVM content, I accidentally click it. And it does actually make a difference, I find, to have it on left. And functionally, it's the same thing. And of course, you can't touch the modern layout side panel visual appearance in the mode that I'm in. And the warnings, I haven't really touched at all, so I believe it is just default. Drop item warning, if you have an item worth a certain value listed here, it will give you a warning. If you play on mobile and you have your drop option on, I would highly recommend having this on. Actually, I have a funny little clip, which I may throw in the video if I can find it on my Twitter. 370. Yeah, sure. Wait, what the hell? Someone just dropped an SGS at the GE! What? What? Better get it. I got it! You got it? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> For... I'll split. <laughs> what? Jared TV, Jared TV, bro. What? Yeah, yeah. Jared TV. What? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> He's paid? He got paid? <laughs> when I was doing a revs event with my clan, there was a Saradaman godsword that spawned on the ground at the Grand Exchange as I was re-gearing. So if that person had drop item warning on, they would not have lost their SGS. And of course, alchemy spell warning on untradeable items could be useful. Don't want to alk your inferno cape, right? So that is all of the in-game settings. Up next, rune light. So because I have not done a fresh install of Runelight, if you do not see a plugin that I mention in the default side panel configuration bar here, odds are it is in the plugin hub, which is located right here. You want to click on that and search for the name of the plugin. Consider this your warning because I'm not going to specify if it is from the plugin hub or if it is a default plugin. I'm just listing off the plugins that I use. If you do not see it, it is most likely in the plugin hub. I don't want to see any comments about this. So first we are going to start with my favorite plugins. Now this is not actually a list of my favorite plugins, more a list of useful plugins that I wanted to have located at the top. So for the bank tags layout, I'm not going to explain this plugin. I'm going to link a video in the description down below if you are a bank user, this will essentially revolutionize your bank organization skills, we can say. The video is from the Perfect G, and in the video he will explain how to use this plugin. It's a great video, watch it. And up next we have the Detached Camera, which is what I used prior to the Oculus Orb being added to the game. In a pinch, this is a very useful plugin if you need to detach the camera from your character to get any form of cinematic type quality, or even if you just wanted to check out something in the distance. Now it is WASD to move around, R to go up, F to go down. Shift will slow the camera's movement down. So this is without shift, and this is with shift. Good plugin. Up next we have Don't Eat It, which is a plugin I mainly use on my UIM, or used to use a lot more when we had to bag in the wilderness, but that has pretty much been remedied. All it does is swap the use option to be the left click option. So it allows for quick bagging or for mains, maybe an easy way to decant your potions. Up next, Entity Hider. Now this one will hide anything, any one of these options. So for example, you don't like NPCs, you don't wanna see them, you wanna play this game alone, boom, they're gone. I feel like a majority of the Entity Hider settings are self-explanatory. However, I did want to look at 2D, which is essentially any elements that will appear above an entity's head. So for example, if I untick this, a guy is scalded at the grain exchange, but if we tick it, it is hidden. Note, this does not remove the fact that the individual is scalded, rather hides it from your view. I've actually made use of this plugin for certain cinematics before. So if you hide NPCs 2D, if any of these individuals actually say something at the grain exchange, it will be hidden. Up next, the green screen plugin. It essentially just puts a green screen behind your character. I've used this a couple times. Up next, ground markers is a very useful plugin, and I'd highly recommend making use of it. Hitting the edit plugin configuration here, we can see these are the settings. So if we hold shift and right click, we can mark a tile on the ground, and if we continue to hold shift, we have the option to unmark it or label it. And there we go. It's labeled. Of course, same thing, shift, right click, unmark, and the ground marker's gone. Now the login screen plugin is very interesting in how it functions as whenever I go to log into the game, if I have it toggled off, my main's information will be listed on the login screen. And if I have it toggled on, Inquisitor's login information, my UIM, will be listed in the login fields. So this is pretty much how I deal with having two Runelight clients open. If I want to log into my main, I have it toggled off. If I have it toggled on, I want to log into Inquisitor. The max hit plugin is essentially just here so that if I have a gear setup fully equipped and I want to check to see the max hit, I just toss on the max hit plugin and it will give me the max hit. Now the Karis Partisan is a newer item, so I don't believe it is accounting for it just yet, but as you can see, it works for the unarmed and it will tell you the next max hit. If I toggle ultimate strength, there we go, max hit. Up next, menu entry swapper and menu entry swapper extended. Now this has a variety of uses and I'm just going to scroll through these and let music play as I can't really explain all these. 
All of them are essentially self-explanatory, and these are my settings. If you want to copy them, great. If you don't, well, use what you want to use. Truly Menu Entry Swapper and the Menu Entry Swapper Extended are two plugins that you should go through manually yourself and toggle whatever will be useful for your old school RuneScape experience. Up next, the Model Exporter. This is how I export character models out of the game. Now, mind you, it doesn't actually work for all objects. It's really hit or miss in a manner of speaking. But you can export quite a few items out of the world into OBJ files to be imported into modeling software such as Blender, which is essentially what helps me make thumbnails and cinematics and all those fancy intros you guys see. For the normal player, model exporter won't really be of any use for you. And of course, those are the settings. NPC indicators. Now, of course, if I right click this woman and tag, boom, she's now indicated. So with my NPC indicators, I am a fan of subtlety. So the fact that it's a gray type of square has a very small border with a bit of a feather and I will shift right click untag the woman and those are the rest of the settings. One thing I did want to mention while we are on this topic, if you shift right click and tag all, of Johnny the Beard, let's say, if he were to die... Oh, I just wasted a Blood Fury charge. Sad. For the rest of time, Johnny the Beard will be tagged. So whenever he respawns here and we see him, boom. He respawned, he's tagged. So if we kill him again, I do believe that the respawn timer should show up. There we go. So it takes two kills for a respawn timer to show up. And if you have an individual, right click, tag all, it will forever be tagged. Now, if I shift right click, untag all, and I just right click tag Johnny the Beard, for this whole Runelight session, he will be tagged. So if I closed out of Runelight right now and logged back in, the tag would disappear. You see what I'm laying down here? Tag is temporary, tag all is permanent. You know, permanent until you manually untag them. Now, as for player indicators, this is a plugin that I actually play around with the settings. So for example, if I'm doing wilderness content, I will enable the draw names on minimap, as well as the highlight others option. So if a player logs in in my minimap range, I will see their name and I can hit a quick teleport if I need to. And last but not least, we have transmogrification, which is how I can quickly customize myself. Oh, look, who's that? Who's this guy? If you click to edit transmogrification, you have all these different settings. You can use the base or follow the item. So there are many different options in the transmogrification option. And I'd essentially just say, hey, if you wanna make yourself look different or maybe use a piece of armor, which isn't allowed, you can do a little bit of experimentation, we can say. Go play around with this one for yourself. It's good fun. Now moving forward to the unfavorited settings, I'm not going to be covering every single plugin. I'm more or less just going to be covering the plugins which have an effect on my specific gameplay. So if you take a look at this fire over here and we disable animation smoothing, you'll see that it got quite a bit choppier. Interesting, right? Now everyone has their own opinion on animation smoothing, whether it looks good, whether it looks bad. I myself like the animation smoothing as I am at heart an RS2 player. So my nostalgia comes from the 2010 area. And trust me, I would be playing with the HD plugin, but I mainly have this plugin disabled because of my Inquisitor series. We will get to 117's HD version of Runelight later in the video. Up next, anti-drag is just as it sounds. It adds a slight delay on my items so that I don't drag and swap the positions on accident. 12 is my sweet spot for the amount of time it takes me to move an item with another item in my inventory space while allowing for the maximum amount of time lag between moving the actual item. 
So if you see here, the item actually stays in place but then jumps to my cursor. And this of course assists me to land very accurate swaps. Now of course everyone has their sweet spot. I believe five is the default, what the normal vanilla client would use. But there's been weird changes recently to the inventory which hopefully are functioning now, but I've heard there are still issues at this point in time. So give anti-drag a shot if you want to give yourself a bit of a delay on your inventory item drag. Attack styles is how I hide the defense style from being trained. If I disable the attack styles plugin, the option will appear and I will be able to select it and gain defense XP. But before we swap back to punch, if I toggle this back on, you will see that I am warned for the defensive style because I have the option ticked. Wow, amazing. So once we swap off of the defensive style, that notification will disappear. That's essentially just to warn you, hey, you're gonna gain some defense XP on your defense peer account. May not wanna do that. So that may be a good option for anyone with a defense peer or a certain type of peer where you don't want to train a certain attack style. So the bank, here is the bank settings. Not much to it. And we will move forward to the bank tags. I'd highly recommend using bank tags if you don't want to organize your bank because you could very quickly just drag items into certain tabs. So if we go look at my bank here, we'll see on the left side, I have my master clue scroll tab and I have all of my items listed here. And these tabs are assisted by the aforementioned bank tag layouts. Again, go check out that video in the description down below. It will most likely be the second listed video. Up next, we have a quality of life for the Chambers of Zarek called the Bats Locator. If you wanna find the bats in the thieving room at Chambers of Zarek, use this plugin. Now, if there's a mini game in old school RuneScape, odds are there's a plugin for it. So if you don't see it listed in your RuneLite plugin area, check the plugin hub. And I'm sure as Guardians of the Rift is a brand new mini game, there is most likely a plugin for it. Ah, yes. There certainly is. Boosts information gives you a handy little user interface which shows if your stats are boosted or not. Grab a little ranging potion here, drink it, and there we go. There's boosts information. Up next we have Bot Detector, which essentially is a plugin made by Ferraric. Apologies if I butchered your name. So I guess something wacky is going on with it right now, but essentially, whenever you go buy somebody, it logs them in this plugin and detects if they're a bot. Now this doesn't automatically report them, but it adds a really cool right-click option to individuals which can predict if they are a bot or not, and it's really fun to use with certain unique type of Iron Man accounts. Apologies to this individual for predicting you. I feel like the camera plugin is pretty self-explanatory, but it allows you to customize your camera, which overlooks the player character. So for example, if I have this outer zoom limit at zero, this is the maximum distance at which we can go out. But if I change that to 250, we can go a little bit further out. Now, does this make the game extremely functional? Probably not. But is it cool? Absolutely. I will leave that at zero and there are the rest of the settings. Now the Chambers of Zarek plugin really just assists you to find better raids faster in a manner of speaking. You can whitelist rooms that you want to do and you can blacklist rooms that you don't want to do, as well as add rotations that are good. Whitelist certain layouts, these are the speedrun layouts if I remember correctly. So chat color was a plugin that I was initially going to skip over, but now that I look inside of it, I do have a few different options here, I believe. So if you want, you can just pause the video and take a peek at any of these as most likely they have a slight impact on my gameplay. If I examine the Karis Partisan here, you'll see that it has a high elk value of 36,000. But more importantly, it's blue. Chat commands is fairly self-explanatory. It lists all of the potential commands that you can type. And if you hover over these, it will tell you how to use those specific commands. So if you ever see someone in game going exclamation mark LVL, followed by a skill, and you only see that text and not an expansion of it, odds are you have chat commands turned off. Chat history I've toggled on as whenever I log out, everything which was previously said will load back up. Chat notifications has a very slight impact. If your own name is mentioned, if someone types your name in the chat, it will underline it 
or you can highlight certain words. Clue scroll plugin. This is a big plugin, even though the settings are very small. If you have this toggled on, whenever you have a clue scroll in your inventory, you read it, it will give you the next step of your clue in the top left. I have a clue where I need to go to Berg to Rot. In relation to the Chambers of Zarek, we have the Chambers of Zarek Scouter External. Now this is a more customizable type of scouting plugin, which I use. This is the main one that is enabled when I go into Chambers of Zarek. These are the settings, and you can actually modify whatever item shows up for a specific room. So in this instance, for Guardians, if that is a room that is scouted, a Dragon Pickaxe will appear on the screen. So for example here, this is a really big raid. Mystics, we have the Salve EI for Guardians. We have the Dragon Pickaxe. For Thieving, we have a Lockpick. Ice Demon is the Smoke Battle Staff. Vasa is the Grazi Rapier. And Tecton is the Dragon Warhammer. So you can modify these how you like. Specify whatever items you like to bring on a Chambers of Zarek run. And they will all be listed on the left side here. So you won't have to look at the room and say, Oh, what do I need for that room? Combat level essentially allows you to get a more in-depth combat calculation. The Crab Stun Timers is another Chambers of Zarek quality of life plugin. Where if you stun a crab, a circle will appear and will count down for approximately how long the crab will be stunned for. Default World is a plugin that I like to use, and I have my default world set to 491. Discord activity is pretty self-explanatory. Up next, we have Dude Where's My Stuff, and on the right side, this adds a little icon which you can click. And for UIM, this plugin is pretty useful in keeping track of where your things are. So for my main account, I have these two things in my inventory. I obviously have all of these items equipped. World storage, you have to actually go and look at all of these world storages in order to load them up into this plugin, which will track them. And of course, you have minigame as well, which keeps track of your points. This is actually a newer plugin, and I'm fairly sure it's being worked on, so more come soon. Yes, I have emojis on, don't judge me. Pop a little smiley into the chat, and it's a little smiley face over your head. Or if you want to laugh, do one of these, dude. It's just funny. It's, it's so funny. Essence pouch shows how many essence you have in a pouch. This is very useful for Guardians of the Rift. The examine plugin is very beneficial, as if you examine something on top of giving you the examine text, it will also give you a value if it has one. Fairy Rings is a very useful plugin. When you go to use your Fairy Ring, it will automatically open up this filter so that you can just search for a Fairy Ring code, which you can go over to. You can search by text. So if I wanted to go to Piscatorus, there we go. There's the Piscatorus Fairy Ring code. Fight Cave Waves is something that I have off currently, but I do toggle on if I ever do a Fight Caves. I don't have to have the wiki open on another page to see, okay, I'm at wave this now, and this is coming next. It's just on screen. And there really is no settings to cover for this. User preference, really. Friend Notes is something that I like to use as I can tag an individual with a certain note if I need to. I use this to keep track of what an individual likes to do or what content I've done with them in the past. And optionally, you could add a note of an individual's original name if you have that one friend who likes to change their name all the time. GPU, now this is a big, big plugin for smoothing out the game experience. If we turn it off here, this is really what the game would look like. No anti-aliasing, which gives you this jagged surface, as well as a shorter range to see. So if I run over here, the tiles will start to disappear on that side of my screen. However, if I turn GPU on, and we will continue to see in the distance. Now, of course, a GPU takes advantage of your graphical processing unit, which means you need a graphics card in your computer to use this setting. It has a very useful feature of unlocking the FPS, and I just set the FPS target for my main monitor's refresh rate. Those are my settings, and this is how I play the game right now. Grand Exchange, very simple. There are the settings. The high score plugin is a, an essential plugin as Whenever you're running around RuneScape, you always want to have that option of right-clicking and looking someone up, and it will pop up in this side panel here. 
under the trophy. There are the settings for high score. Idle Notifier is a plugin that I have made really good use of in the past, especially when I was going for my D Warhammer on Inquisitor. But yes, if you're trying to AFK something and hey, maybe you accidentally forget to click on the screen, it'll send you a little notification to your desktop to tell you, hey, you're about to log out, you should probably click to stay logged in. Instance map is something that I make use of in the chambers of Zarek and it will just open up a little makeshift map which doesn't have much functionality, but in a pinch in instanced areas which don't have an official map location, it's very useful. Interact highlight. Now this is most likely what a lot of individuals are looking forward to in this video. Now believe it or not, one of the few features of RuneScape 3 that I like is the fact that when you hover over something and you can actually interact with it, it will highlight. So for example, my nature house here with my pets in it, you'll see that it has a blue outline. However, when I click on it, it gets a green outline. So I have my hover set to blue, as you can see on the right side here for objects, and for NPCs, it is set to yellow, as you can see up here. I like using it because it's visual confirmation that, yes, you are indeed hovering over this thing, and when you click to interact with it, your character's actually going to do something. So a few of you may notice whenever I enter combat with an individual, the health bars look different than what they would normally be. This is thanks to the Interface Styles plugin, and if you edit the plugin configuration, there are high detail health bars. And I use the high detail health bars as they make me nostalgic for RS2. Yes, amazing. And of course, the high detail menu occurs when you right click things. So for example, as you can see, my whole interface just changed when I disabled that. So toggle that back on. Okay, there we go. I fixed it. We're good. I will get to how I fixed it later. Inventory setups is very useful for saving certain configurations for certain types of content that you like to do. It adds a little icon on the right side, and as you can see here, I have all of these different setups available. Now what you have to do is gear yourself up first. Get your inventory set, your spell book, your rune pouch full of runes, inventory filled up, yada yada. Then hit that plus icon to add a new inventory setup name it, and then what it will do is pull up a setup like this, where it lists all of your equipment, your spell book, your inventory, etc. If you have a change that you want to make to this whole setup, you don't want to have to make a new one and name it all over again, hit this button and it will update. Item charges will list the number of charges on a particular item before they break. So there are all of the settings, and those are the details. Item prices is pretty self-explanatory, and here are the settings. Item stats is pretty self-explanatory. If I hover the max cape here, you don't see anything, but if I toggle it on, there's all the details. I like having item stats on so I can make a quick comparison in the inventory if I need to. Loot Logger. Now this plugin may not be required anymore as the Loot Tracker, RuneLite's integrated tracker, has been updated to be a bit more accurate and update and save per character. See, the big thing about the loot logger prior to loot tracker getting its update is the fact that the loot logger tracked per character and it tracked every single kill. And of course, it only tracks from the time you have the plugin installed. Mouse tooltips is something that you see constantly active if I disable it here, you will only see the information which I previously had set up. So notice how when I enable it, it now says teleports on the max cape. If I wear the cape, it will say wear gauntlet cape. Mouse tooltips essentially just adds that extra box to say, hey, this is the action you're going to be taking by clicking this item in your inventory. Having music enabled is a very big thing as granular volume sliders allows you to better control the audio settings here. So by by default, you can only trigger these to certain levels. You can't actually slide this, you have to click on the bar for a specific level. So with this enabled, it allows you to slide and see the exact percentage that you are setting the volume to. NPC aggression timer is very useful for things like sand crabs. So if I head south here to the legendary location of sand crabs, you'll see this yellow line appear around. As you can see on the right here, the aggressive color is set to yellow and unaggressive is red. When this aggression timer 
hits zero, you will become unaggroed, which means that the crabs will stop attacking you. All you have to do is step outside of the lines and you will be reset. So let's say for example, my aggression timer hits zero and I step out here, the timer just reset to 10 minutes and I can step back to wherever I was killing the crabs. Object markers is very useful. As you can see, I have it in use at my own player owned house for my Xerix Talisman. What this does is it essentially highlights the click box of anything that you're trying to click. So if you'll shift and right click the item itself, you can see that I have the option to unmark object, or let's say I want to highlight the dig site pendant, I can mark that object, and there is that click box. Opponent information, essentially. So like I showed earlier with the UI for the hitboxes, if you see here, the rat has hit zero out of two hit points, but if I change this to a percentage, you see that it's swapped to 0% health. Really, this is just preference as to if you want one or the other or both, but I like to show the hit points. Again, user preference. There are certain player-owned house options, which obviously you should have enabled. One thing I didn't actually know about is that the poison plugin is actually the reason why the HP orb icon changes when you are poisoned or diseased. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but it's on and that's what I see, so seeing is believing, isn't that what they say? The prayer plugin is as follows. There are the settings that I use, and there are a bunch of other things that you can customize in here. So when you hover over the prayer orb icon, you'll see your prayer bonus as well as the time remaining for your activated prayers. Puzzle Solver assists you with clue scrolls and the puzzle steps. That is fairly self-explanatory. There are the options. So the Raid Reloader plugin allows you to reload certain raid layouts which you do not know a majority of the rooms for. So there are two certain spots. I'm not sure if it'll work in this location. It's either here or the doorway. So as you can see, it worked right here. But if it doesn't work in the east location or by the plant, then you want to go by the entrance and reload the raid. This works a majority of the time and it will disconnect you as you saw in the top left. The regeneration meter is fairly self-explanatory as it essentially just shows you how long it's going to take for your hit points to regenerate. As you've seen in previous videos, it adds a little red bar which goes around the health orb. I have my report button configured to show the amount of time that I've been logged in for. Resource packs. Now this is a big plugin. As you can see, there isn't too much in here, but that is because it adds an additional side panel icon. As you can see, the resource packs hub we have selected pack dark theme. So if I swap it to none, as you can see, it gives the default layout. But if I swap the selected pack to the dark theme, there we go. And of course there is many, 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 many different types of user interfaces that you can make use of. So make use of resource packs if you want a very fancy or just a dark mode version of your user interface. Now, previously I said I would mention why I had my hide roofs option off, and that is because I have the roof removal plugin on. So if we go into the options here, I have destination tile, hovered tile, and player's position ticked. So what this does is whenever I hover, am inside, or click, to, it will hide the roof of the building that I'm going to. I really like this because it makes the game feel more immersive when I can actually see the rooftops. And I mean, come on, a majority of you are probably missing out on the rooftop action. So for example, if I go to Varrock and run to the northeast, like look at all these roofs you guys are missing out on. Anytime I hover and the rooftop disappears, odds are you guys are not seeing that. Does Varrock not feel like a city now? Do you not feel like you're running through a city? Rune Pouch is pretty self-explanatory. It just essentially adds little details about what runes and how many you have in your Rune Pouch. There are the settings. So originally I didn't record a section for the actual rune light settings in the configuration side. So going into the settings here, 
I wanted to mention that my game size is not actually this size. I manually adjust it by using the slider options on the sides and bottoms of the screen. Contain in window is pretty important since I have a dual monitor setup. Remember client position is also important because I like to play with my client near the top right or top left of the screen depending on which account. The exit warning just makes it so that if you hit the X in the top right on accident, it'll give you a little pop-up. You can toggle your display name in the top left corner or not. It's up to you. And there's also notifications inside of RuneLight itself. If you wanted to make your screen flash, you could do that. And there is the extra settings. Screen markers are something that I have made use of in the past. They add a little icon on the right side, and if you click over to here, and you unhide them, you'll see that I have a few different icons enabled like that. And of course, if I close the side panel, they're actually a bit more accurate. But this is most useful in places like Blast Furnace, where you're just trying to memorize where certain things are, and, and you want to quickly withdraw or deposit things, or remember where certain things are. Skill Calculator adds an additional icon to the right side and allows you to calculate things. Great, pretty integrated, good stuff. The Skybox plugin is very useful, as when you look into the distance, you'll see that it's actually a nice color of blue. But if I toggle that off, it's the void. I don't think we're underground. Seriously though, I'm a big fan of the Skybox. It adds life to the world. Slayer is very useful, so that you'll be notified of superiors, and you can make use of the task command. So if I type exclamation mark task, it will show my... Okay, I don't have a current Slayer task. So if I had a Slayer task, it will have shown, but I don't. Tile Indicators is a very important plugin if you're attempting to get into the higher echelon of PVM. So you see when I click there's a tile that appears. That is the Tile Indicator plugin. Here are my settings. So there is an option in here that I do not have toggled, and it is called the True Tile Indicator. So when you move in old school RuneScape, the actual location of your character is ahead of where your character model is. So as you can see, when I click over here, the blue tile is constantly ahead of my character. So what that actually means is, to the game, the blue tile is where your character really is at the tick that you move. As a reminder, a tick is 0.6 seconds, also known as a game cycle. But the true tile indicator is very useful if you want to start to learn where your character actually is when you're doing PVM content. Now I have quite a few years of experience on old school and I understand the concept of my character is essentially always ahead of where I visually see my character, so I don't make use of the true tile. But if that's something you want to train your brain to understand, you can enable that true tile indicator and it will show you that, hey, your character is actually ahead of where it looks like it is. Now I like making use of the destination tile because when the tile disappears, that tells me my character has arrived on that tile. So see how the tile disappears before my character model actually gets there? That's how I know that, hey, my character has arrived at this tile now. And at that point, my character was still running. So this is a very important plugin if you want to start understanding the true movement of old school RuneScape. The timers plugin is very beneficial, and I will scroll through these so you can see. Essentially, all of them are enabled, and I'll enable that one too. I don't know why it was disabled. But essentially, timers, good. They're useful. Use them. Virtual Level Ups is a plugin that I've made use of more recently in the Inquisitor series. Essentially, it's just giving me celebration for hitting virtual levels. And virtual levels are anything past level 99 in a skill. Virtual levels aren't really levels, they're XP milestones, you could say, as the highest a skill can go at this moment in time is 99. So the Weapon Gear Animation Replacer adds an icon on the right side, and as you can see, I've mentioned this in a previous video, but you can add certain model swaps, you can add animation swaps, you can add many, many different things. So let's say you wanted to swap the Amulet of Blood Fury and you wanted to show, let's say, a Third Age Amulet. So now, whenever you equip an Amulet of Blood Fury, it will show up as a Third Age Amulet for yourself only. And of course, if you right-click the cog, you can remove the swap as well. 
This is how I show the max cape variants of specific capes on my Inquisitor account. I don't actually have the skill capes. Again, I've explained this in a previous video before, but there it is. Play around with this. It's fun. Though I wouldn't recommend using weapon animation swaps or anything like that because it does make the game more unstable and your rune light could be prone to crashing. Personally, I only use this plugin for model swaps and I don't do anything else. Wiki and Wikisync, of course, these are just two beneficial things. Wikisync allows you to type in your name on the Wikipedia. So in this instance, I opened up the brand new quest Beneath Cursed Sands and I looked up Inquisitor, which is my ultimate Iron Man, and I do not have these certain requirements, but I do have this one. And that is thanks to Wikisync. So if you want to be able to quickly look up if you have the certain requirements for certain quests, enable Wikisync. Now, World Hopper is not a plugin that I've made extensive use of, but I've heard it is very, very useful when it comes to quickly swapping worlds in the World Switcher. So we have the World Map plugin, and this adds a bunch of new icons and little details which aren't originally listed on the map. So for example, you see the combat bracelet here can teleport you to the Champions Guild, or you see a fairy ring code attached to a fairy ring in the world map. It's just more quality of life for the world map, would recommend. And of course, all of the XP drops, XP globes, which appear when I attack things. So for example, I hit this barbarian, you see these orbs up here. Damn it, I use another blood fury charge. The XP tracker, which adds an additional icon to the side, and you'll see it right here. And of course, there are the settings. And last but not least, the XP updater, which if you want your account to be tracked on an external site for statistical purposes, you can enable XP updater and enable any of these or any of the future sites which will track stats. So those are my old school RuneScape game settings as well as RuneLite plugin settings. Last but not least, I wanted to mention 117scape's HD plugin. Now, this replaces the GPU plugin. You cannot have these on at the same time. They will toggle each other off. And rightfully so, you should only have one plugin using your GPU at a time. So I will dive into my settings here and I will go through all of them for you all just so you can see what my settings are. Nothing in miscellaneous. I do want to note that I like atmospheric lighting, but at both end game raids, odds are you wanna have this off as the lighting will mess with the shadows in both instances of the Chambers of Zarek Ulm head phase for the Falling Crystals and the Falling Pieces of Bloat in the Theater of Blood. So there it is, my old school RuneScape vanilla settings as well as my RuneLite plugins and those specific settings. So if you guys think I missed a plugin or should be making use of an additional plugin, be sure to comment that down below. Be sure to subscribe or like the video if you found a new plugin which you do believe will be of benefit to you. Last but not least, don't forget to sign the petition in the description down below if you are a UK resident, I would greatly appreciate it. And above all else, I hope this helped you guys really optimize your user interface and your overall old school experience. So without further ado, check out the video on screen, which YouTube will most likely recommend to you. Subscribe if you're new, toggle notifications, share the video around. If you found out about a new plugin and you think a friend should be using it, share the video with them. Without further ado, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.